Well, welcome to this week's Monument Monday. And this week we are joined by Leo Layden, who's a local man here in Maharao in North Sligo. And Leo is a member of the Sligo Field Club and he has great knowledge about this area. And we are at Knock Lane, so Leo is going to tell us all about some of the archaeology, uh, the prehistoric ar archaeology that we have out here. So we're out here on Knock Lane Hill, as we call it, at this prominent feature, this hill just behind us. And here in front of us then we have Knock Lane Coastal Promontory Fort. There's about 300 of these coastal promontory forts all over Ireland. They're not just unique to Ireland, they're in all over Western Europe as well, but they're very defensive features. So we'll go into that after a little while. What you really are looking at is a small peninsula within a bigger peninsula. So it's very, very defensive. And the people were using the features of the sea to make it more defensible. All they had to do then was uh, dig some trenches and raise it up. And as we go out there, we'll, we'll see there's two yeah. more features. But where mm -hmm. I'm standing here now is really where the Promontory Fort begins. In that this field here is called a pound field. And a pound is where cattle were kept or impounded, stuff like that. And just below, we're on our way down, we'll see that you have a natural water source as well, a spring where it mm -hmm. creates a pond. So cattle would have been able to have been kept here for a number of days because during the later medieval period, right up to the Elizabethan conquest, you had huge cattle raiding all through Carberry, the O'Donnells, the O'Rourke's, the McClancy's, all coming through as they were going south, they came between the mountain here and the sea cattle raiding. And there's one reference to where the O'Hearts were the prominent family on the peninsula, that the O'Hearts followed the O'Rourke's and there was up to 70 men killed. Now that's probably an exaggeration, but there was probably a lot of men killed during oh, one of these cattle excursions. So that was a, set, a, a later use for the promontory fort itself. So we're here now and um, behind you are the Schlieve League cliffs and Donegal and out to St. John's Point. And then you were saying that on the far side then we've got Mayo. On the far side we have Mayo. We're here at the very conflux of on our left is Sligo Bay and here on our right is Donegal Bay here. So we're here at the epicentre of it. In front of you is Bell Mullet. The cliffs to the left of that are the Cage of Fields, Bally Castle. Across here is Ocris, where you have a very, under the windmills, mm -hmm. where you have another very prominent promontory fort, and a pair with this one. And as we go down, this one is probably one, one of the best examples you'll see anywhere in Ireland. Great, uh, and we're going to take a closer look we're now going to at take the, a closer the look at it. Yeah. ramparts of this um, really interesting site. Yeah. So we're here now in the fortifications for the coastal promontory fort and you can see the considerable size of them and I'm just going to go back. This is the entrance through which we came and the hill, Knock Lane Hill up behind us and Leo is here standing in the foss so you get an idea of the considerable depth. We can see here now where they were using the seed side and this bank and this foss which was a dugout ditch which would have been where I'm standing would have been at least three meters deeper underneath me they were using this as a very defensive feature so this is a very defended site uh, there's quite elaborate stonework remains in places just underneath you where it's actually built this aspect of it some of it would be prehistoric it's probably iron, it's probably right into the Iron Age. And the entrance here, as we go by it, we'll see some built stone as well. This causeway is probably filled in. When the promontory fort was in its use, you probably, it was all a foss, and there might have been uh, some sort of a, a bridge pulled across the air that could be removed if there was times of strife outside. Right. And so the, if they were under attack, they could come into the fort here, you know, with the, with the cattle and protect themselves from attack. Exactly, yeah. It was all about protecting the people who lived on the peninsula and later on protecting their cattle. So 
the, maybe the women and children came in here for security. Their cattle were kept out here while the men and, and the family group were outside uh, trying to prevent the marauders from taking them away. We'll um, take a closer look at some of more of the um, embankments with this monument. We will, yeah. So we're here now within the third set of embankments that define this promontory fort. And you can see the extensive banks and foss here on either side with a causeway between them. And right in here, we have the inner part of the promontory. And Leo, tell us about this area. As you can see, this is the third phase of defense. This is the inner part of the promontory, is probably where the, the most defenseless members of the community were left while the, the short period of strife was going on outside. These promontory forts, including this one, were never meant for a long duration of habitation. And There's nine of them excavated all over Ireland, some in the north of Ireland, a couple on the west coast, and some, most of them down in Cork. They've never shown up a prolonged period of occupation. Leo, you were telling me that these promontory forts were used from prehistory right through to the modern era. Can you tell me a little more about how this one here at Knock Lane was used? This one was used for different features. To the back of this bank we have uh, where there were two corners of the second defensive used where there was cannons put on them and it's recorded that during the times of strife during the Tudor conquest of Ireland that some, there are some Elizabethan soldiers camped here. Where we're standing is another feature that we're, it's just visible when you stand in it. It was the year a sign during the Second World War. There were signs for the American planes which were coming to Northern Ireland to be used during the Second World War by the Allies. Allies. This was era sign number 68. And to our left here is another little feature that we're not sure of the period of time, but it was used maybe in some sort of hot site. We don't know. It looks like a small, some sort of a small house site. And there was prehistoric activity on the islands here just off the coast. The earliest as well. known date for any habitation on the peninsula is here on this little island, Enishbrolen, the island of Oboilan. There's a town land just beyond us is with a, a, an old church in it, and that's called Oboilan's Church. But there's dates for 4300 BC, so this is before the Neolithic period in Ireland. It's just at the very end of the hunter gather period, just in a maiden just on this island here. Wonderful. Well, thank you, Leo, for showing us around, and you have so much knowledge about the place, and um, we're delighted to have been treated to a guided tour of the site today. Thank you very much. You're very welcome.